Wedding photography posing, what is right and what should you avoid at all costs? Find out in this video. Patreon Panda is dead. I'm moving everything over to a new website. And if you're one of the first 100 people, you can get the best deal of all of my courses in the history of time and forever in the future of the history of time that they will ever be. $6.58 a month if you sign up annually, which means it's a lot less money than Patreon was. And it's a lot better of a system than Patreon because I can actually organize courses. There's going to be new stuff going up there the rest of the summer, the fall, the winter. The focus is to do one single standalone course every single month. And if you're signed up for that, for the $6.58, uh, you will receive that course as part of that. So it's, it's a good deal, because usually those courses, um, Book More Weddings is $299 if you bought it out outright. It's a much better deal to sign up for that and get everything. Uh, the way the courses are structured on that website are kind of three tiers. The first tier is technical, so if you want to learn off-camera flash for wedding photography or um, a more in-depth version of actually what you're going to see today, my introvert's guide to wedding photography posing, uh, or my, my pricing course for anything like that, that all fits into, that's all the first one. Pricing, booking more weddings fits into the second tier, uh, as well as just really everything that's going to help you with your marketing, uh, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, all kinds of content in that, in that middle pillar, courses, individual courses. And then the third pillar is something that is a personal passion of mine, and it is traveling or getting paid to travel. Uh, I know it's a bit of a weird time right now, but that only means that coming up the other side that they, the companies that you're going to be working with are going to need even more marketing, and there's going to be even more opportunities for you. So hopefully uh, hopefully you're, you're cool with investing a little bit in your business and you instantly have access to $2,000 plus of content if you do sign up. So sign up for that approximately now because there's only 100 spots available at that rate, then it goes up. So uh, yeah, if there's still a spot, sign up and uh, I'd love to have you over there. There's going to be ongoing content there. There's It's, it's, it's Patreon in a new way that's going to be much easier to use and with all the, the happy parts of Patreon and none of the sad parts because it was a challenging system to use for a number of reasons. Today, we're talking about wedding photography posing. I am eventually, I'm a little bit overexposed, aren't I? That's better. Today, we're gonna to be talking about wedding photography posing, poses for wedding photographs. I am actually going to, at the end of this video, I'm going to throw to a live shoot so you can skip ahead to the live shoot if you want. It's one that has been at least in pieces on my channel, or I guess in a lot of it has been on my channel before, but I think it's the perfect embodiment of everything that I do for posing. So if you are new to this channel or you've only watched a couple of the full wedding day videos or whatever it might be, I think you can get more value out of just this shoot that's coming up at the end of this video than everything else when it comes to specifically to posing. Obviously full wedding day, different, different scenarios, different stuff. But uh, for the most part, I would say my posing is kind of encapsulated within that. And you can actually see me working with a couple and, and getting the images that I want. Um, for me and posing, it's a variable cloudy day. It's gonna be a bit of a struggle for me to, this is why you need studio lights. Thanks for, thanks for sticking with me while my, my, my gaffer moves the cloud. We have switched to the professional the, the, green, the green A for automatic shutter speed. So hopefully this will not cause us problems again in the future. So for posing, my idea is primarily that I don't really ever wanna feel like I'm posing, uh, that while I do have some go-to poses and some things that we're gonna talk about over the course of the first section of this video, I, I never want my couple to feel like they're in a school photo. I feel like that's the one thing that couples hire me for, and I feel like what couples hire most photographers for, if they're looking, even, even couples that are looking for that, that hyper-posed editorial look, in their mind, usually they believe that they're looking for a candid photographer because those photos to them look candid. So regardless of kind of who your couple is, there's a pretty good chance that you can, you can sell and you can, you can have your marketing pointed at being a candid photographer that goes hands-on 
and when the moment calls for it. But for the most part, I don't post people like their school photos. I'm just not good at it. I can, I can give them simple directions. Like one of the easiest ones is that if, if somebody's just kind of all like this, you can just ask them to push their chin a little bit forward and it makes them just appear a whole lot different from the entire, like both physically as well as emotionally. I feel like that just kind of opens up. As soon as you do that, it's just a headshot basic, I guess, push the chin out a little bit to avoid doing that. Uh, so you can give simple directions like that, but for the most part, I don't ever want to be uh, the school photo where it's like, okay, now, now chin this way and then down, eyes up here. Okay, eyes back at me. Nope, move your head this way and eyes back at me. I don't want to do that on a wedding day. That's not fun for anyone. It's not fun for me. I am very introverted, believe it or not. Uh, I don't, I actually have a lot of barriers and a lot of problems with communication. So when I'm talking to couples, I never feel 100% confident in what I'm directing, uh, which kind of, I guess, led me down the road of actually devising this, this method to my posing because I, I was never confident enough to be like, this is the pose that I want. I'm going to put you in it. I'm going to move your, like sometimes I just don't have the words for them to like move exactly how I want. And what I discovered is it actually makes images a lot more customizable to, to the couple if you give them light directions rather than giving them specific things to move, unless it looks weird if they're like doing like a, they got like all their hands and they're trying to hug and it looks weird, like get them to move their hands. But for the most part, if I'm posing somebody, I don't really want them to feel posed. And I feel like their true personalities can come out. I think as uh, the overarching principle of posing and of actually doing shoots in general with wedding couples and specifically for couples that are not used to having their images taken, is that you have to get from the point where they just feel super uncomfortable to the point that they've almost forgotten that you have a camera. So I think that if you can bridge that gap, if you can get that, I, I would say that for the most part now, couples will obviously like, they will know that they're having their photo taken, but to bridge that awkward period, I feel like I'm maybe down under five minutes with most of my couples now. Um, and the way that I go about it is we just get right into it that I just like, we'll meet in a parking lot and usually I'll meet at a parking lot. That's maybe a two minute walk from where I want that first location to be. They can't just hop out of their car and be like, Oh, here's the first spot. All right, let's, let's do it. Um, that's weird. So I give them a little bit of warm up time. Usually uh, wedding day is a little bit easier because you're always coming from somewhere and you always have a destination engagement sessions. On the other hand, you're kind of just, you're, you're out there to take some photos. So engagement session, I take that warm up period and just park a little bit further away from where I actually want to go or do a little, little loop to come back kind of the, the backside of the location that you were looking at and then shoot around to the front. Uh, the, main thing that I do actually we'll scroll through some images here we'll go through we'll go through a few images so the first one that I always do the easiest one people are just comfortable when they're walking so if they're holding hands they're walking with their partner regardless of if it's a wedding day if it's a big dress maybe be conscious of that and get somebody to hold it or, or do this after it's been bustled but for the most part people are just comfortable. Like if you get them to hold hands and walk towards the camera, um, this takes some technical skill on your part. Uh, I personally, I guess to, to tangent that quickly, I run autofocus continuous. I shoot Nikon, uh, AFC, and then I usually have the it's single point autofocus and I have that box right over top of one of their faces. And I do my best to kind of keep them on the same plane, which means, or the same focus plane, which means that if they're both walking straight at me, that I'm not gonna pivot off this way so that I'm shooting one of them and the focus points on one, that if they're walking at me both of their faces here and here I'm gonna walk back with them and make sure that my focus is tracking nicely on their face you also maybe need a, a better lens you can't buy the cheapest lens or you can't buy you could do it with manual focus and I'm, I'm certain that lots of people used to to do this manual focus but I personally find it a lot easier autofocus continuous with a lens with pretty good autofocus and put that point right on their face. And if your autofocus is a little bit slow or if you're shooting manual focus and you only have that manual focus 85, the idea or the easiest way to get that shot is just pacing back with them at the same speed. So if they're walking towards you, you're, this is, this is them, this is you, you just kind of move at the same speed. And then your focus has to do a little bit less. Whereas if you're like running towards them while they're walking towards you, there's a little bit more technical that could go wrong. But if you're just nicely walking back and also you can kind of lead them. So I think that's the other thing that I do that when I'm doing this photo, this is always the first photo that I take, uh, especially for engagement sessions that are incredibly awkward at the beginning. I get my couple hold hands. Let's just go for a walk. They start walking towards me and then I get them to turn around and walk out that way. 
And at that point, I already have probably three or four photos that are pretty good, pretty natural, pretty relaxed. If the first image was one that I just got them to stand there, arm around each other, smile and pose, they are just going to feel all of the fear that they felt driving up to that shoot and for potentially the three months before that shoot. Uh, they're gonna feel all of that right away and it's gonna start off the shoot in a really bad way. Starting off with walking, with movement, with kind of some sort of lightheartedness and, and happiness and a good conversation and a little bit of a walk usually bridges that gap and sets you up for a much better shoot overall. Uh, and then when you ask them to put an arm around each other and smile and face the camera, it's, it's more normal. Um, I also build that specific shot. I feel like that's the key shot that we all need to get and you absolutely have to be getting that shot on a wedding day and if you're not, people will complain. Um, it's the smile face the camera full length and then if you're at an engagement shoot, half length, wedding day half length to probably quarter length, three quarter length, close ups. Just get a lot of variations of that really boring shot because it is the one that if it doesn't exist, the, the mom, the grandma, the dad, cousin, somebody's gonna complain that they don't have a photo to put up on their mantle and even though you've created all this amazing work with beautiful lighting or off camera flash or whatever it is, that everybody just wants that, that boring, simple one put up on their mantle. Also on that list is a shot of the back of the dress too. So I always get them to hold hands and walk away from the camera and I'll pose the dress so it looks like they're walking. If it's a big dress, I don't make them like drag it through stuff, but I get them to hold hands and pretend as though they're walking or maybe take one or two steps and that's how I get that back of the dress shot. So starting with walking, starting with movement, I feel like the overall, I guess, principle for, for myself for posing is it's more of just keeping the mood and the energy just good during the shoot. This also kind of comes down to not thinking too technical. I feel like if you're like, I don't have a camera with me, but if sunglasses are my camera now, if you're like constantly like, adjusting things, doing test exposures, they're gonna lose confidence with you. So even if you, I, I would usually shoot through my exposure adjustments. So I'll do a test frame and I'll see where I'm at and I'll be like, all right, I gotta go up. And as I'm kind of rolling my shutter speed up to match where it needs to be, I'll have an eye and I'll be kind of checking test frames as they're, as they're showing up. If you're shooting mirrorless, this isn't a problem for you because you just see what you're taking if you're on an EVF. But for me on a digital SLR still, uh, that's kind of how I do it. And I shoot only with an 85 millimeter lens, which is another, I guess, key thing for me uh, that I found that when I brought lots of lenses, if I brought a bag that it was just, it became very cumbersome. And I also found that very rarely, maybe once a shoot, I would use uh, my wide angle lens, like a 24 or 35. The rest of the time I was using my 85, or maybe for you it's a 50 or a 35 or whatever it might be. Whatever that main lens is, if you can just get incredibly comfortable with it, I am easily, probably 10 years ago, is probably to the point that I know exactly where my 85 millimeter frame is before I even hold my camera up. So I can get to the exact distance that I wanna be, and then camera goes up and I'm ready to take photos. So. I would say that that would be a goal to subconsciously get to that point and to get so comfortable with that piece of gear that you're actually able to just, it, you don't think about it at all, which means the couple doesn't have to think about it, which means that you can stay in more of the moment and keep the energy alive while you're walking around. So um, that would be one key thing. Now, I don't have any specific, like I, I don't do this pose and then immediately when I do that pose, this pose comes next and this pose, I, I don't have a roadmap like that built out. It's kind of just a natural organic thing, the way that it goes. Um, usually if they're holding hands and walking, the next most organic thing is to put an arm around each other and continue walking, to look at each other and laugh about something. And I straight up call it out. I'm sure you've heard it on some of the behind the wedding day or behind the scenes wedding day videos that I, I will literally just be like, hey, can you guys just laugh? And it's such a stupid and uncomfortable direction. Uh, obviously you have to know your client if this is like, a, I don't know, like a multi-million dollar wedding with very high end um, people maybe maybe don't use this this stupid direction, but with most couples that I shoot, if I tell them to do that, it is such a stupid direction. They know exactly what, I, what I'm asking of them and they just laugh because of the uncomfortableness of the situation, which actually breeds a real moment in that laughter and you just have to be there waiting waiting to capture it. Um, from that, so they're walking, holding hands, putting an arm around each other. Um, another one that I get them to do is just like grab on and just like hug an arm. It can be either of them or um, usually I would say it's kind of the, the way that I structure it is that I get them to do that, but again, keeping their eyes kind of on the same plane because I'm shooting very shallow depth of field. I, I really like that look. And then also when you're in a place such as Dumbo Brooklyn, there is a heck of a lot of stuff going on in the background and the more you can minimize that with depth of field, the better that image is going to look. This is also uh, 
This is, so this is inspired by Vanilla Sky, inspired by Bob Dylan's album cover. I was like, hey, this reminds me of a thing that I've seen before. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy it and I'm going to steal it and I'm going to make it my own. Take that, Bob Dylan. Next up is a shot from Montreal. You can get them to just hold hands and just when they're walking away. Um, this is what I'm talking about. So just keep, the, keep the, the energy and the flow going that they can walk towards you. They can put an arm around each other. They can cuddle into each other. They can interact with each other. They can smile. They can laugh. You can keep telling them, like, look at each other. Look back at me. Um, get your heads a little bit closer together is a very easy, an easy touch that usually creates a much better image that if they're both like walking together like this and picture, picture me mirrored over on this side, uh, that's not really a great romantic shot. But as soon as they put their heads together, a little bit more, which might not be the most natural way to walk, but with that small direction, you really make that image a heck of a lot better. So they're walking towards you doing some stuff, they turn around, they go another way, and then you capture that image. It's all working with composition, all working with the lines that you're given. Um, I like roads, roads are just kind of the natural, natural lines, parks, pathways, alleys, everything can kind of get the same feeling as, as far as the composition goes. And you can even have them just kiss as they're walking away and you can get that back silhouette out in the sun. Nice, right? Golf course. You can also mix it up a little bit and when they're walking the other way, you can get them just to do some strange things. Um, I usually call it out as like, hey, I'm gonna try something weird. It may or may not work. And if it doesn't work, it's always funny because I'm like, that just didn't work at all. And we all have a good laugh about it. I don't ever usually show them the image. Sometimes it works out like this. Just like hold hands in a weird way. Um, so in this case, I had them just like each facing one direction. I had them close together like this. Here, face, back. And then I had them move a little bit apart, hold hands, just do a little circle. Um, it was weird, I, I called it out as being weird. I have no problem and shame and just being like, hey, this is gonna be really, really strange. And I feel like that can also, if you have some really, really incredible creative ideas and you're like, how do I, how do I possibly convey my couple to, like, to do this action? Just call it out as being, hey, I'm going to ask you to do something really weird. I'm only going to ask you to do something really weird one time. And don't make it like super actually creepy weird. But uh, if it's like a weird compositional thing or you just want to try something or you, like just don't put it at the beginning. Don't do that as your first photo. But um, somewhere like halfway through the shoot, I think that's totally reasonable. And I think the more honest you are with it and the more confident you are with the fact that you know it's going to be weird. And then when they do it, it's weird. And it, it's not going to, it's, I don't know, it's, it's funny. Everyone can laugh about it rather than actually feeling uncomfortable and leaving the shoot, getting back in their cars and being like, that was really weird. Um, but when you call it out and you're honest with it, it, it works. If you can't walk, well, I guess Claudia could walk, um, but if you're in a scene that requires kind of a very specific thing, I also use the same elements where if they're just holding hands, standing side by side, that there are so many different ways that you can do that. So they can just be holding hands, standing side by side. They can face into each other. They can put an arm up on each other. I'll talk about that again in a minute. Um, he can hug her from behind, which always looks like prom. She can hug him from behind if it's a male-male or female-female relationship. Like, you can do both combinations as well. And I feel like um, in the male-female relationship, if, uh, if the dude hugs the girl, it's always a prom photo. But when the girl hugs the guy, it's actually usually really cute. Um, so I would maybe recommend against doing the prom photo and for doing the, the girl hug the guy photo. I think there's an example in here somewhere. Yeah. Here we go. There's one. That's from, from Switzerland. We, uh, we took a train, and then we took a car, and we took a train, and we missed most of the sunset, and we shot all in blue hour, but it was beautiful. And just something simple like that. It's, it's not like a posed photo. It looks genuine. It looks like a candid moment, even though it was 100% posed uh, in this time. So let's, uh, let's get back to the, the photo tour. At some point, you get them just angle into each other and just pull each other in nice and close. If they're doing something weird with their hands, you can, you can call it out and tell them to, to switch it up. And I feel like that is a, a direction that I feel personally comfortable doing um, when I don't feel maybe comfortable posing something to a T. My, my other fear I'll share with you right now is having to do a wedding shoot in a space like this where I can't go anywhere and I have to shoot everything in front of a white wall. I, I do not do well in that environment. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm trying to get better, but I really just do not do well in it. So that's maybe another insight to, to how I like to work and how, where I found my stride as somebody that just is a little bit avoidant of actually trying to pose people directly all the time. And also just fearful of doing like, just making people feel weird. Um, I feel like the way that I'm kind of describing 
in the images makes it a much more organic and fun way to go out and do photos. Uh, so that's kind of what I've gravitated towards and that's kind of my background that I can, I can shoot a band against a, a wall here, but we're gonna, do, we're gonna do 10 photos and I'm gonna feel like that's it. Uh, whereas I personally like to go for a walk. I like to get out somewhere. And even if we were shooting in here, I'd use the wall and I'd use the bar and I'd use these chairs back here and I'd set up some different scenes just to, just to change things up a little bit. Now, if you are looking at getting a little bit more of a romantic image, I feel like most of the images that I've talked about so far have been a little bit more of just kind of, I would say maybe like a lifestyle style image, which means I'm not sure of the definition of a lifestyle image, but it seems just happier and, and kind of more, more fun and enjoyment, I guess, overall. Uh, whereas you can easily make any of these poses into something that's a heck of a lot more romantic. So for this image right here, I had them angled in towards each other, veil up over top of them, and I just asked them not to smile. So that if they were smiling and they were happy, this would be a completely different image. They are just very calm, collected. I also directed where I wanted the eyes to go. Um, another thing that you can do, if you are getting very specific and you have something in mind, and I don't believe that it's super weird, but you can just be, you can make eye contact with whoever you want to direct their eyes, and you can be like, can you just look down this way and then close your eyes? And then if it feels weird, just be like, I know this is a super weird direction, but can you close your eyes and just kind of look down in this direction here? And let's go like that. And then the other big thing that really brought that image together, um, I, I wish that I had more samples to show you. I, I don't know where this wedding is. It's on a hard drive from a long time ago. I could find it, but um, the other images that are surrounding this image did not have his hand up here on her shoulder. And that is what brought the image together, that it was an okay image, but it felt it felt too open, it didn't feel like their moment. As soon as I requested him to put his arm just right up here, it really did bring the image together. It closed them off into their, their own little bubble and with the, the physical bubble that's over top of them, it ended up becoming a very, very romantic image. I colored it exceptionally warm. One, because that was like the, the venue is very warm overall. And two, I wanted to make it kind of that, that I guess more of a monochromatic um, or like I don't know, it's, it's almost a sepia, I guess. But I wanted to remove any of the distracting color from it to make it more about the moment. And I could have made it black and white, it would have looked great in black and white, but I felt the, the warmth of this. It was a winter wedding, everything was inside, candlelit. I felt like it went really well together. So maybe a, a testament to how your, uh, both your post-processing as well as the way you shoot things kind of go into how the final image actually feels. Another image here um, that used a similar thing. This shoot is also up on the YouTube channel. Um, I'll find it and I'll link it in the description below. But we went out west, we were in some mountains and uh, we did some photos. This, this entire shoot, which I'm sure you've seen images if you follow the channel, I use these images and the, the videos a lot. And we had about 10 minutes to do the entire shoot because it was starting to rain and it was also almost after sunset by this point. And when you're after sunset and you're in the mountains, um, last light is like two hours before sunset. So you're really, really dark by the time that that happens. So uh, same exact thing. I just requested like, hey, can you just put your arm just like up above just on his shoulder and you can even get them to move their arms like shoulder just like, hey, can you just like go up and down a little bit like that? And again, you can say it's super weird, but it makes for a good photo. And usually they're like, oh, all right. And then it actually puts them in a moment, I think. Um, the other thing that I've learned from uh, specifically from Jerry Jonas. So Jerry is an incredible photographer, an incredible wedding photographer, if you're not familiar with his work. But the thing that I pulled from him, I could by no means emulate his style in any way. He's very, very specific with what he wants every image to look like as far as lighting, as far as lens choice, as far as like even f-stops and the way that people are exactly in the images are his creation. One of the things that he does or did at least um, when he used to sh shoot a lot of weddings was that he would actually coach people into moments to actually unlock a little bit more of the romance of that day. Motorcycle break. Jerry would pre-coach couples a little bit into the, mo into the moment. Say for instance, and again, something that I can never do, but if you can pull a piece from this uh, and you can use it and it feels natural to you and you think your couples will respond well to it. Uh, so he would be, say for instance, where the bride is getting ready, she's in, in the room, Jerry's outside with the bride's dad and they're just kind of talking, like waiting for Jerry to be able to go into the room. 
Jerry will actually coach the dad and he'll be like, remember this, the, like, this is your daughter's wedding day. This is the last time you're gonna see her before she's a married woman. Can you think back of all of the times that you've spent together? I don't know his wording. See, I, I'm not even good at it to like act it out in front of a camera. Um, anyways, he would go and he would create a moment that exists, but kind of exists under the surface because there's so much going on on the wedding day. And he was able to just unlock just a little bit, a little bit more of the emotional part of the day. And that would always lead to an incredibly emotional image. Like if you lead somebody up like that and then the door opens and then his daughter's right there and you've just had him envisioning the past like 35 years of, of his life, watching her grow up from a small child to like now her wedding day. Like obviously that, that dad is going to have a pretty big reaction and he's gonna capture that. And that's why he wins album of the year. Like every single year he submits an album at WPPI, maybe not anymore. Cause I don't know if he's allowed to enter cause he's an ambassador of WPPI. But that is how he would create albums. He would create real moments that were really happening and he would just make them to like the 10x degree of what that moment would be without his input. So that was something that I learned that I knew would make better images, but I couldn't, I can't say that. Like I can't be in a room with the father of the bride and, and have that conversation. That feels very strange to me. For Jerry, that is just his personality. He's able, like he's in that moment with, with that father and he's able to create that moment. So um, something to think about maybe a little bit and maybe if there is a piece that you can kind of pull from that. I do, I guess this on a very, very smaller level. Whereas if they are like, if they're hugging to, to loop back to what I was talking about before we, we went on that, that wild ride, Jerry, Giannis. Uh, basically like the, when people are holding each other and they're actually moving rather than just being like stuck like this, if they're moving and you're asking them like, hey, can you just like rub the back of his shoulder? That's actually gonna bring them into a moment and you don't have to coach them too much into that. And that's, that's an, I feel like a, a comfortable amount that I'm okay with, with saying. Uh, and it really does make for better moments and it creates that connection and you can just shut up for a minute and just let that happen and circle around. Again, not something you're gonna do like first image as soon as you show up to the shoot, but something that you can integrate over the shoot that really will create much better images. A few other images to roll through, uh, just different variations on what I've been talking about. So just kind of being side by side, getting a little bit closer. You can have like somebody hugging the other person's arm and then you can get them to turn into each other. And those are two very different photos very easily. Or you can do the, I, I believe that somebody called it the Portland, where you just like hold hands and just look the opposite direction. You can step that up by having them just kind of like hug an arm around each other and get a little bit closer and, and mix it up like that. Uh, and then maybe one last one, whenever they're facing each other, that if they feel very like it's an eighth grade dance and they're just kind of holding each other like this, you can get one of them to link their arms up kind of over top of the other's shoulders. And it really does just instantly create a much different image than would naturally come to somebody's mind, but feels and looks completely natural. If they have an outfit of some sort, so if they have a, a large dress like Shannon has here, this is a forest fire. This isn't a beautiful sunset. This is just what it looks like all the time when it's forest fire season in Banff National Park. If they have a dress, like most of your brides probably do, if they have pockets, they're gonna be super excited to show you that they have pockets. Get them to play around, like have their hands in their pockets, have them move their dress around. And even uh, the next sample image here is one that, to show off even more of the dress, this was simply Jason and Amanda reenacting their first dance under this tree at Langdon Hall. And I just, I was like, hey, can you guys dance for a minute? And they're like, absolutely. Uh, and they just went and did it and they set that shot up. I didn't even place them in that specific spot. That is where I would have moved them, but they just naturally gravitated there and it just worked out really well. So uh, I feel like leaving a little bit of an element of randomness to your images and having your couples not overposed, uh, I feel like it's another, I'll mention this in the, the video that you're about to watch, but by not overposing in the very beginning, you give your couples a lot more power just to actually be themselves. And my, my key is really just kind of in that first couple of minutes, make it as normal and easy as possible to get them from feeling uncomfortable to feeling like we're just out for a walk rather than actually out to take images. And uh, engagement session wise, it's, that's definitely a bridge that you have to get across. On a wedding day, usually that bridge doesn't even exist, that it's just like, 
hey, we just got married, this is awesome. Hey, let's go do some photos. And you'll just have access to a lot more of their actual emotions and they'll be a lot less guarded in that moment. And they'll actually just wanna hang out with each other and have a good time. So it makes your job really, really easy. So also picking, I guess, your moments overall and, and what moments that you wanna do photos in of the two of them. Uh, for instance, like a couple coming out of the, the ceremony, like really excited. I'm gonna do photos with them first, even if the plan is officially like, hey, we're gonna do family formals first, we're gonna get all the family photos done. They're coming out, they're having like that moment that I wanna capture. I'm gonna do five minutes of photos with them and then maybe we'll go to the family photos if, if they're feeling up to it. Um, so structuring your day can also unlock a lot more emotion and um, just, I guess, realness overall so that you can capture your candid, candid images. That is all for this section. We're going to move into section two, and uh, hopefully you enjoy that video. Uh, again, 100 spots available on the new website, so if you're interested in getting literally every single course I've ever made for $6.58 per month, if you do the annual, uh, that you're able to, to have instant access to all that right now. So if you want to learn a lot today and invest a little bit into yourself and your business, uh, there is a spot to do it. And head over to the link and there's a huge list of everything that you get, but it goes from the technical, from the off-camera flash skills to posing skills, all the way through booking more weddings and creating a really incredible business, and then ends with the, the pillar of getting free stuff and getting paid to actually travel. So there's a lot of stuff on there and I'm gonna be continuously adding to those pillars over time. Uh, every single month, new course going up. How's, this, how's the light? So good. Is it good? So good, man. Am I posing correctly? Is there enough tension in my forehead? If it feels weird, then you're doing it right, Taylor. Does it feel weird? No, that's no. an incorrect. That's that's my favorite incorrect statement. I know. <laughs> it's um. I think America's Next Top Model yeah, created it. Okay. And they're like, if it feels weird, you're doing it right. And I believe like the wholeheartedly the opposite. That if it feels weird, you're gonna remember how weird that feels. Maybe it's true for fashion photos that you want to be doing something that's a bit weird and interesting. But for photos of actual couples, you want them to remember the experience as a positive thing, not as just like whole hour of being weird with a photographer. Uh, Liam has suggested we come here to TNT Grocery to pick up a random item to use in the shoot. Yeah, I and I don't know what that is gonna be yet, but- I don't know either. There's out. a lot of random items here and my favorite drinks are here. Uh, there's a lot of Japanese items. They have Bakari Sweat, which is kind of Gatorade inspired by sweat. Um, it tastes more like sweat than Gatorade. And then they also have Kalpis, which they've renamed Kalpico, because I guess Kalpis is a milk. Kalpis? Uh, it's, mel it's a milk beverage. <laughs> and it's literally in, in uh, Japan, it's called Kalpis, but in North America, they've changed it to Kalpico because of the fact that it's a milk beverage called Kalpis. Kalpis. Kal Kalpis. <laughs> C-A-L. I'm no more likely to get it. <laughs> they actually have the OG Kalpis, the actual real Kalpis, not a... Uh, Calpico that we have, uh, we have here the Picari Sweat and the Calpis, which are both not great items to be consumed when not refrigerated. Gotta get a Mr. Brown, right? Yeah, look at this guy. I think we've lost focus of why we're here. So we're here to use a random item. Um, what, I, so far I've selected three things that I want. I found the item. Good. Shoot through that. You can get some cool dragon shears. Wow, this would be an item that Marshall Angus would be into. Yeah. Here's a photo of him eating ice cream. I'm the most excited for this Mr. Brown cappuccino. Kappa, 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 cappuccino. Kappa, 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 cappuccino. So my strategy for posing in general is to make things look as natural as possible overall. Uh, I really don't like to do too much, it's out of my comfort zone. I don't like to play games with couples to get smiles. I don't really like to um, pose like a Sears portrait photographer or a Walmart portrait photographer. Uh, I really just want couples to be themselves. And the challenging part with that is that I don't really work with professional models all that often. So when couples show up, it is their first time ever probably being in front of a professional photographer um, in a sense of just like being the three of us rather than maybe a family session or something that they've done in the past. So I want to basically get them into the flow of things, get them confident that they're actually doing a good job, which is I think one of the most important things that a lot of us 
overlook uh, that just like reinforce the fact that they're doing a good job if they are doing a good job and then um, keeping the momentum running you'll see over the shoot that we move a lot that we keep walking um, this one specifically because we are filming for this it'll be a little more disjointed but typically what I would bring is just an 85 millimeter lens uh, my Nikon 85 1.4 G is always a lens that I pretty much bring for engagement sessions like this as well as wedding day it is pretty much always my main lens and why I kind of limit myself to that is because I know that if I'm not worrying about changing cameras or um, switching lenses or any of that, that I can just focus on keeping the flow of the shoot actually running, uh, which is what kind of bridged me over the gap of somebody that was getting photos that I, I was kind of, I was fine with them. I'd get like one or two out of the ballpark shots, maybe every shoot, but I wasn't really getting a full catalog until I started paying more attention to the flow and the movement of the day. and. I think it's like very much like attracts like so I tend to attract a lot of introverted couples and that makes it even more challenging for them to be their selves in front of the camera so if I can get them walking I can get them comfortable like I feel like walking is the easy thing you'll see us do a lot of that over the shoot where if they're just holding hands walking towards the camera walking away from the camera put an arm around each other uh, they are comfortable doing that because that's a thing that they are used to doing uh, when you get people standing still and wrapping both arms around each other and they're like inches apart that is not usually a comfortable position for most people that most people would find themselves in a lot during the day uh, and that kind of shows in the uncomfortability of it in the very beginning um, but at some point you can kind of keep peppering that in and at some point they become very comfortable with it it's just maybe not on the first time or maybe not on the second time but at some point you get it and if you don't you just go wide <laughs> I'm excited to see what the the shears get up to though dragon shears <laughs> With me today I have my Nikon D850 and my 85 1.4G lens, which is my favorite combination. I usually just go for a walk with this. Uh, today I also have my 35mm lens in my bag here um, because I have a feeling these clouds might open up and we might get something cool, but usually I'm just on this all day. And uh, let's begin the process. I you guys posed yourselves. I like that. <laughs> no, no, do, no, do exactly what you were doing. You were just kind of like hanging out like that and you were just kind of tilted into each other. So one thing that I like to do is whatever couples naturally do, I kind of just work with it and make them, uh, do you guys want to get a little bit closer together? together? Yeah. That's good like that. And I try not to overdirect at the beginning because if I overdirect really hard right here, uh, they're just going to rely completely on me to do all of the posing and to move their limbs and everything like that. But if in the beginning I give them a little bit of power um, to make their own decisions and give them positive reinforcement, you guys are doing great. Usually it means for a better shoot overall and just more comfort over the entire length of the shoot that doesn't really go away, so. One of my other favorite things to do and the easiest way to get people to be super comfortable is just to get them to walk towards you. Uh, if you guys wanna hold hands and walk towards me over here. And you guys look at each other, you don't have to pretend that I'm just creeping here. And if you wanna put an arm around each other while you walk. That's awesome. Uh, I think we're gonna go around the corner to the little alley down there. Another thing I look for is just very clean textures. So up here, there are some very clean walls. So I'm gonna bring you guys right in the center up here. That looks good. And if you just wanna hold hands and just like stand side by side there, and it's just gonna be a big shot with kind of everything in it, but you guys really pop out from. And if you wanna look at each other and just be happy with each other. Perfect. And I'm going to make you guys exactly kind of how you're smiling at each other there. I'm just going to make you hold hands and walk towards me here. Awesome. And if you guys want to look at me for the last ones here, you both turned perfectly at the exact same moment. That's great. Those look really, really good. So when I'm looking for locations, I'm just kind of looking for different elements that stick out here. For instance, there's some really good leading lines. Um, so even though there's a little bit of an elevation shift, uh, if you guys want to hold hands like right there, and even though there's a bit of an elevation shift, the lines kind of really do lead into the photo. And the shutters in the background are a nice repeating texture. And if you guys want to look at each other, and you know what, if you want to turn into each other completely and just like put both arms around each other and get really close. Awesome. And if you want to give Meg a kiss in the cheek, maybe. Oh, it. Can I do that again, but just rotate you guys this way just towards the light? and I'll just, uh, maybe a little less. 
Right there's good. That's good. And even if you want to close your eyes and just kind of like lean in almost. Close my eyes? Just kind of like, just like you're overly enjoying this strange moment that doesn't naturally organically happen too often, but. All right, we're going around this way. All right, I'm gonna have you guys in the center of this. Uh, I'm gonna make you walk, just hold hands and kind of walk that way. And then at some point I'll yell and you can turn around. Awesome. And if you guys want to turn around and come back towards us over here. And same deal as before, you can just kind of be really overly happy with each other and perfect. And if you want to put an arm around each other while you're walking too. Awesome. And I'm going to bring you guys closer to the glass to get like a little bit of reflection here. So we'll see if it works. Um, even if you want to kind of just get really close together, however is the most comfortable. Yeah, something like that looks good. So cute. Can I also, like, while we're here, I might get a new LinkedIn picture Yeah. Want to do that down here? This is like kind of LinkedIn sure. headquarters. LinkedIn headquarters. Okay. Yeah. Come back towards me this way just so you're a little more well lit. Yeah. You might even have to come way down here. Sorry. Perfect. LinkedIn profile photo. Nailed it. I'll do one more horizontal just so you have options. And wood wall. You can pretty much just lean up against it. Uh, go this way just a little bit so you're... That's good. And if you just hold a hand and just kind of almost like lean into each other a little bit like that. That looks good. And if you want to look at each other and just pretend you're enjoying enjoying the wood wall. Perfect. That looks really good. Um, can I make you hug Dave from behind? Because if Dave hugs you, it's like a super prom photo. And if you want to kind of just like almost angle your head into him a little bit. And Dave, if you want to kind of look back kind of over like that. And I know you're not going to be able to, but if you want to attempt to make kind of eye contact, like kind of looking towards each other, that looks really good. And can I make you do that? Just rotate this way just a little bit. Actually, even that, that looks really good. Perfect. And your beautiful wood wall featured again. <laughs> that looks so good. Cool. All right, let's go across to, to those bushes. I don't know if they're high enough. Perfect. And if you guys want to get really close and you can like almost kiss, but don't actually kiss. That's perfect. It's like the instant, instant romance. <laughs> instant attempted romance. All right. I can have you guys in this, uh, maybe just go past the first little bush there. So you're a little bit hidden and this will be all nice and romantic. And it'll look like we just went out into a huge field. African lion safari. African lion safari. And if you want to just face each other and just get really close and just pretend that I'm like not here at all. Um, just make sure I can kind of see your faces. A little bit. That's good. And Dave, if you want to put your hand kind of up on Meg's shoulder or something like that, that looks good. And I might even do one if you guys want to hold hands and I'm going to make you walk out this way and just pretend you're like frolicking through a, a field and you guys look at each other and so much fun. So much fun. That's awesome. Cool. Do you want to do one where you're just like super serious in the sure. like American yeah, Gothic? Like, yeah. Like we're like, yeah, I feel like it'll be funny like for us if no one else. All right, serious. <laughs> All right, that's good. I got what I needed. Thanks. It makes everything golden, we believe. Oh, cool. cool. <laughs> and they're super crazy sharp. But I figure if I get some color. So maybe let's go back in here and I can add some color to the uh, and try to not stab myself. They're very nice. Yeah, These are very dangerous. high quality scissors. Kind of, I can make my own bushes with this, with this golden item. And if you guys just want to get really, really close together and kind of cuddle and put both arms or maybe put your arm back up on our shoulder like you had up there. They look really good. Yeah. Yeah. I really can make my own bushes. Show me like what happens with that. So how there's like kind of the golden tint over everything. That's sweet. From the scissors? Yeah. Cause it's like. How do you figure that out? So you just find where it reflects the best and what you kind of want. And then you just take a bunch while you move because you guys are moving and the object is moving. Magic. Genius, man. Magic revealed. Magic. All right, that looks good. And if you guys want to turn around and come back towards me here. This is the Uptown uh, model shoot. You guys look at each other and just pretend you're having a great time here in with the Uptown BIA. And the wind is actually working with you guys, so that's good. Do you guys want to go into the corner over there?
Looks good. And just go down to like the far corner that way and just, you can put an arm around each other and just look out that way. Yeah. And if you want to turn into each other a little bit. All right. Uh, if you guys want to hold hands and just kind of look at it that way. All right, and if you want to turn to each other just so I can see your face a little bit. That's great, and if you want to hold hands and you can slowly kind of walk back this way here. You don't have to go backwards, you can go forwards. Backwards. <laughs> that looks good, and you look at each other like you've been doing. Perfect. And if you want to stop there, just arm around each other, smile, face me. This is the boring one that all family wants regardless of how many cool photos we take. Thanks for watching today and after watching that last video I realized that I should really go get a haircut right about now. Uh, if you're interested in joining up the new site you're going to get the, a deal that's never going to come back so head over there and you'll get one the introvert's guide to wedding photography and the last video you just saw was a little clip from that as well as lots of other stuff including all my presets including my 2020 presets that just came out uh, and lots of other stuff $2,000 in content for six dollars 58 cents a month if you do the annual and i'll see you over there lots of content to come over the next uh, couple months years we'll, we'll, we'll keep it going for a long long time see you there